episode of URP Practical Talk. I am your host, George Gonzalez, and today we have two, well, familiar faces we got on the show today. We have, of course, Dr. Vishnu Bandhu, the presidential candidate for the URP, and we also have the prime ministerial candidate, Ms. Marcia Lewis. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I'm sure things are heating up on the campaign trail. So can you tell us a little bit about well, what's the latest going on? Well, um, George, we have been campaigning um, seriously. We all over the country. We are there, um, in spite of the the rumors mm -hmm. from the media's and the um, GCOM that I am out on, uh, of the race. That is no way true. Everything so far, the media has said about me is lies. Everything, every, not one truth they have. You know, they have been spreading this rumor all over the place. So um, in any of these cases, have these persons who've done these stories saying that all these things are facts, have they even fact-checked with you? They never back-checked with me, never. All what they hear, mm. they go and blap on, ah. the, on the media right away, you know? Um, the last thing from GCOM, mm. around the 20-something, they gave us, they sent a letter to me. I guess they sent to the other two persons, too, yeah, you know, who the presidential candidate of the different parties. Mm. They sent a letter saying that they're giving me up to the 31st mm. of the last month to give them a reason why I should not be removed from the list. Mm -hmm. I did that. I gave them a reason why I should not remove from the list, until now we can't hear nothing from them, mm. you know. Um, but I understand what's going on. Anything that happened on the, the table of the ch chairperson and the commissioners, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as something happened, one of the political party, mostly the PPP, will go out there and they will s spread the, 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 the rumor, so and so, so and so, so, and, which is not true. You know, they just want to confuse the public and give the public an impression, you know, that I am out of the race. Why are they so much afraid of me and the URP, you know, trying to target me? In fact, many of our places, GCOM was at, 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 at my office today, and they were asking me how, how I'm progressing out there. And I told them, I said, I'm, I'm getting more resistant from the PPP people than the PNC. Mm -hmm. Not so much from the PNC, but the PPP, yeah. right? In fact, they, 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 they run our people with cutlass and all kind of thing. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the ignorant PPP people do that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and that what had been happening in this country. The PPP had been peddling lies and lies on, on, on me all the time. And so but I, 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 sorry to cut you right there. But so, do you feel that their leaders are kind of encouraging this? Oh, definitely, you? yes, definitely. That, that's serious. Yes, right th there. that is that is how mm. they operate. Mm. You know, the PPP. I always say this: is the most propagandary party they have in this country. Mm. Like to peddle lies all the time. They are good in that. Very good. There are no political party can beat them for telling lies. Mm. Right. That is the PPP. And, um, you know, it, it's sad to know. And our people, many of them are so ignorant and keep on following these people, lying to them. They're lying to them over and over. They're lying to them, you know. And some of them people, you know, who, who behave like an idiot is some of those who call themselves educated people, yeah. university graduates. And, and doctors and lawyers, these are the kind of people so ignorant, you know. It is, it is very sad to know what is happening here, yeah. you know, in our country. Yeah. So the campaign, we are, we are still going on with our campaign as usual, like everybody else. Yeah. Of course, we don't have the kind of funds to, to, to have big rallies like them yeah. and share alcohol and share food and fetching people from all over the country. And this is not only the PPP, but the PNC have been doing the exact same thing. 
You know, when the PNC has, has a rally in Burbis, you pass by, by, by Coffee Square, mm -hmm. you will see 25, 30 bus line up there. Mm -hmm. And you know the sadness in, in, in it? Mm -hmm. That the government mm -hmm. vehicle are used to transport these people, mm -hmm. right? Government vehicle that Mark Granger uses to transport these people. The bus that Mark Granger for the school children is not Granger property. It is the property of the state, right? Yeah. So they take the property of the state to do their personal party campaign. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the PPP used to do the same thing when they was in government. They, you know, they use the, the government vehicles also to do other things. Yeah. You know, so they are no different between the two of them. You know, there is no difference whatsoever. Um, but nevertheless, the URP will continue. Y you know, if not, no matter what they do, the URP are going forward with the election. Mm. That's great. You know, if they, they want to take me off, they take me. If they don't want to take me off, right. if they take me off, we still got replacement. Mm. URP are prepared for that. Right? And we are going with that force. We will continue going with the force. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd like to let people know then that you are still in the race. Well, of that, course. You know, that the party is still in the race. That even if Dr. Vishnu Bandhu is not the one that's leading yeah, it, that it is, is the URP cannot yeah. be stopped. But, but do Dr. Bandhu will always be at the side of whoever you put there. Yeah. You know? Just like how Bharat Jack gave the side of, of, of Irfan Ali, yeah. Vishnu Bandhu will be side of anybody who puts there. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So you have right? that support and have that note. Yes. So that's absolutely good. Yeah. That's great. You know? So, um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I'm not worried about anything. Mm. I'm totally not worrying. Nothing, nothing. Right. So is there um, any other um, updates from GCOM, or that's about the latest that you got? Well, that, this is the second visit of GCOM. Um, I mean, second visit of Carter Center today. Okay, so the Carter you know, Center. Yeah. So the same from, right. the, from the U.S. Okay, yeah, from the U.S. Yeah. This is my, my second meeting with them, mm -hmm. because they are, they are eager to know what's happening, mm -hmm. you know, with me and this um, thing, because I show them out my, 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 my loss of citizenship, which comes out on the 16th mm -hmm. of the month. I'm the only one, mind you, mm -hmm. that hold up my, my, my loss of citizenship certificate mm -hmm. and show the world, yeah. right? We have people like um, Herman, who is in the, in the PNC, mm -hmm. uh, Carl Greenwich, mm -hmm. um, guilty sheriff on the PPP. Mm -hmm. None of them mm -hmm. comes up until now, and I'm challenging GCOM mm -hmm. that I would like to see those people lost citizenship. Just as they, 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 they want to see mine, I want to see there. And I, if they are not there, I want them to be charged also. Right? For not produced, because their name are on the candidate list. Still is? They are on the PPP and PNC candidate list. Wow. Right? So I would like to see all these people who are dual citizenship and on the PPP list and the PNC list, I would love to see that. Just as I, I declare my certificate, I want them to declare their certificate. Mm. Mm. You know, it is very sad to know that we don't have justice in GCOM even, mm. right? Mm. GCOM is controlled by the PPP and the PNC. Mm. When Carter come here and Carter suggested to have an independent organization mm -hmm. to run the election. He didn't suggest to put party personnel. Mm -hmm. And these people who are party people, I call them political hawks. Mm -hmm. Political hawks, because as soon as they, they heard a little thing, mm -hmm. they spread it, bam, they gone out there for, to, to try to, you know, get the their, their people's attention. Yeah. Oh, my party is this, my party is that. How can you get justice in this country when you have the two major political parties control GCOM? How can you get justice? You tell me how you will get this justice. Hmm? So w when you say it like that, it makes it sound like it's a system in which it's slanted against any person who does not necessarily 
Be, subscribe to either of the two. Either the two party, because there's three commissioners you have from the PPP, mm. three commissioners from the PNC, okay. P -APNU. And then just right? the chair. And then you have the chair right? alone by itself. Huh. Right? So how, really, where would you get justice in Guyana? So, so yeah? that it doesn't really sound like you have any true, real, independent representation. No, you don't have. You don't have. Huh. These are political hawks. You don't have real representative. It's out of question. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and if anything, I'm, I'm looking at it as it sounds as if that these persons, if anything, they, because they're representing their parties, that it's very difficult to expect them to support anything that isn't going to support either their party or the two-party paradigm. That because be, how would they support it? Because they don't have an open mind. Exactly. Their mind, they, 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 the support of the PPP, their mind is on the PPP. Mm. And their support of the APNU PNC, their mind is on the uh, APNU PNC. Mm. So you don't have independent mind people there. Mm. You know, no matter what you said, they are not independent minded. And one for, and for, for the next thing is, according to the Kaina Constitution, GCOM not supposed to take off anybody's name from the list, any presidential candidate. Mm. They're supposed to forward it to the, the, the high court, for the high court to do that, mm. right? And I haven't break any law. I haven't lied, I haven't break any law, mm. you know? I had, I had a meeting on the 14th with the chair, chairperson, Low and Field, and their advisor. And I asked the question on the 14th, yeah. right, that at what stage do you have to relinquish your dual citizenship? Mm -hmm. They said they don't have no law of such. But then on the 21st, they had a statutory meeting, and they make up the, the, the thing saying that on the 10th, you're supposed to be off of the list. Huh? Yeah. Not, not the law, they make up the law, yeah. right? That on the 10th, you shouldn't be a dual citizenship. You, you, you know, swear allegiance to a country. Not dual, they don't have nothing called dual citizenship. Yeah. Swearing allegiance to a next country. Yeah. But then again, there was no National Assembly at that time, mm -hmm. right? There are no National se Assembly now. They are National Assembly after the general election. Mm -hmm. Then there will be a National Assembly, yeah. right? So I am long before the National Assembly to be assembled, yeah. right? Long before. Yeah. The, the 16th, I, I, I produced my last certificate. Mm -hmm. The 18th, they publish it in the official gazette, yeah. right? When you publish something in the official gazette, it's supposed to be legal because you, you publish it, right? And general election will be on the 2nd of March next month. So I am all the way ahead of all these things. So I don't know what GCOM is trying to do, what the PPP and the PNC are trying to do really, right? I can't say GCOM, I got to say PPP and PNC because they control it, yeah. right? So I don't know what they're trying to do, really, yeah. you know. And um, whatever they're doing, I want to give them this message. No matter what you do, the URP will still be there and fighting you all. And, you know, and I find it interesting because somebody, um, I was discussing this situation with someone recently, and they brought this point that they said that they, they find it interesting, they feel that uh, a lot of these rules that were put in place were against barring dual citizens from actually entering into politics. But often you find that, uh, he, this person suggests that a reason why you find a lot of these third parties are led by dual citizens is because some of these people, they had to leave to see the issue. And a lot of the persons who never got the opportunity to leave don't see a problem. No, they never see the problem. Yeah. They can't see it. Mm -hmm. You know, many people who never leave the, the shore of Guyana mm. doesn't understand. Mm. What, they call, what we call democracy here mm. is dictatorship mm. in Guyana. And that's why the URP are talking 
about a true democracy. If you call it a democracy, we are talking about a true democracy in Guyana. Right? And we are talking about a real change, not an exchange. Because all the time, we are from PNC to PPP. PPP, PNC, PNC, PPP. That's an exchange we are having all the time with two political parties. So they are trying to get me out of the way. So the fight will be between their, the two of them. So one of them will go back again. Right? But that wouldn't happen. We will fight them with the last breath of the URP. You know. We will fight them. Because we are saying that no one political party should dominate the parliament. If, if that wasn't so, all these things would happen in Guyana, since there's no confidence, we would already have election, we will already have a new government in place on everything. But when you see one political party dominate everything, it means they have all the votes. No matter who comes in, they can't say anything. They dominate everything. So this is where we want to see true democracy. And the only way you'll see true democracy in Guyana is when other political party is in the parliament and no one political party dominates the parliament. And that's why you out there should vote for the third force, the URP. Absolutely. So yes, that, that, and that is genuinely a hallmark of any real working functioning democracy is that multi-party system, one in which multiple persons, multiple groups are coming together, making their opinions known, and really bringing the nation forward. Mm -hmm. now, absolutely. But I, I wanted to, to revisit that, but I wanted to give a second to ask uh, Miss Lewis about um, some of the things that the URP has been working on as of recent. Now, you told me about a recent donation that you all have given. If you can tell me a little bit more about that, please. Yes, George, definitely. Once again, thank you for having me. Now, we in the URP believe seriously that literacy in Guyana is indeed a problem. If I am to think back, my own self, um, when I was, I read my first novel at seven, age seven. That is not the case today. Most seven-year-old cannot read at that level. And that's the sad truth. So we looked at the issue and we realized that literacy is a problem. And as Dr. Manu has always said, the other two political parties are racing each other to put up flags, you know, from, from Linden to Lethem, right and and throughout the length and breadth of ghana when that money could be put to better use mm -hmm. now we sat down and we thought about what we can do towards putting guyana forward mm -hmm. driving guyana forward and we decided to make a donation of some books to the national library so the urp made a donation and that was done today to the national library and this is to aid the situation with the low standard of literacy in Guyana. Mm. No, absolutely, that's great. So uh, that so that this is a broad range of books, uh, different yes, ages yes. and everything? Different age ranges, and we have um, books on a wide variety of topics. That's great. A wide variety of topics that we donated today. Right. And um, so what was, I guess, the response to the National Library? I'm sure they appreciated the Very, donation. very much. They, they, the response was great. They were very grateful. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this, we will be making more donations of that sort in the future. That's great. Because we believe that those are the kind of things that we, sh we should spend um, money on. Mm -hmm. Something that will make a positive impact, a real impact on, on Guyana's future. That's great. Now, so, of course, the National Library, they appreciate the, the donation, I'm sure. But um, I want to kind of shift this a little bit to kind of the URP's message, that how do you feel persons are responding to URP's message right now? Okay, based on what we're hearing from the man in the street, mm -hmm. because a lot of what we have been doing, we have been meeting persons on a face-to-face -face basis. Yeah. As Dr. Bandu said, we are not having the big rallies mm -hmm. where we're speaking at people. Yeah. We're going into your homes, we go house to house, and so on. And we meet the people on a face-to-face -face basis. And th what they're saying is that 
the people of Guyana need a change. Mm. The people, uh, this is the cry of the people. They a need real a change. Real change. And we believe, we, we are touting, URP can be that change. Mm. URP is that change. Mm. And not an exchange. And not an exchange. <laughs> yeah. Not the political football mm. that we see, the, you know, back mm. and forth. Mm. So that's the response that we're getting. The people are hungry mm. for a change. The people are hungry for true democracy. And we, we, we pray that this, this, you know, reveals itself at the polls. Absolutely. Now, I know I would have asked uh, Dr. Bandu about this before, but I also kind of want to know from your opinion that, uh, of course, unfortunately, ethnic voting is a serious problem in this country, and it's something that, is, that we've seen that's gone on for years. Now, can you say, in your experience, you see that persons of color, that black people or Afro-Guyanese are, are also receptive to this message as well, like this is a cross-racial thing, not just Afro, not just Indo, but just that multiple Definitely. all ethnicities are Definitely. Are receptive. We have received that kind of response mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. From every ethnicity, people of every ethnicity that we have visited, mm -hmm. the people are saying, yes, the URP mm -hmm. is indeed, they receive that message, they see that we mean what we say, mm -hmm. right? We are not saying that, you know, oh, we're we not giving them empty promises. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the URP, I believe, is the only party that follows its bold words with bold actions, you know. Mm -hmm. And we are going into every community. We're not afraid to go in because the people, you know, mm -hmm. very, in some instances, we have issues where people, we, we, you know, people are run, run out of the area mm -hmm. and things like that. But that's rare. Yeah. However, the man in the street receives us well. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they understand the message that we're preaching. Mm -hmm. And they, they give us the assurance that this is what they want. They want change. I think it's high time we, we come away from the, 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 the voting along racial lines. Mm. It, it, it hasn't worked for us in the past 50 odd years from independence to now. It hasn't taken Guyana forward, and I don't see it taking Guyana forward. So it's high time we stop it mm. and understand that this is only a policy that would have been passed down to us at, a legacy, I should say, that was passed down to us by those persons who would have crafted the idea of divide and conquer. Absolutely. Because we know the old adage that says, united we stand, but divided we fall. So if, if we are united, then no one can break us. Yeah. And this is the message we're giving to Guyanese. If we are a united people, then we must and we will go forward. Our uh, campaign message is based around the theme, onward, upward, we will go, right? And we can only do that if we stand together as one, if we are in one accord. Absolutely. No, and those are all, all great points. So, um, but now I know we're kind of coming close to the end of our time. So I just want to know if there are any other uh, points in regards to the URP and some of the progress that you're all doing and things of that nature that you'd like to share. Okay, well, we were looking at the 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 voters list mm -hmm. and we were looking at what um how many people have been registered yeah. eligible voters that is and this year the 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 voters list has a, a figure of six hundred and some six to one thousand mm -hmm. three hundred and seventy eight of that figure however um some six thousand five hundred and thirty four of those people are unverified registrants so we are worried as to what will happen to that, those that six thousand odd persons. Will they be allowed f to vote? Are they going to be, you know, because they're unverified and people are, are are actually concerned. As a matter of fact, I have spoken to persons who have said that they haven't seen their names on the list. I know of persons who um, said to me that they they registered and they last house to house registration. And then their name doesn't appear on the list. Yeah, that is concerning. It Absolutely. is a concern. And especially when I think by the, but the margin that the, the coalition would have won in the last election, that, that's even more concerning to that's see that. But George, concern. one of the things is that um, I am very worried about this list, the, the figure mm -hmm. that they're having. Yeah. Um, in 20, um, you have the, the number, in 2011, yeah, we had... 
we had 652 and 79. Re re register sem and 79. Mm. Um, in 2015, we had 570, 780, 570? Yeah, 1,000. 570,000, 789. Mm. Mm. That is like, like from 2011 to 2015, mm. it's like 20-something sure. thousand more. Or less than 20, yes, yes, right? Yeah, contraction. Yes. Yeah was on the list yeah. for register. Mm -hmm. Now, from 2015 to now, we have 90,500... 90,500... 90,591 persons. So, 90,000... Additional persons now. Yes, additional. From 2015 to now. Mm. So, something seemed very wrong. That's a large number. Right? Very large. From 20, 20, very some 20,000 every five years, yeah. now we have 90,000, mm -hmm. 91,500 and something voters. Mm -hmm. Something definitely wrong. Mm -hmm. The list had been padded. Mm. Now, are you the only party that's really kind of brought this t as an issue? I never, I, never, I, never, I, never, I never heard no other political parties yeah. say anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I am telling you, this seemed very wrong. You know, it seemed that the the the, the party them, the major party them, part of the list. Mm. That's how I see it. That's that's definitely very right. concerning. And, yeah, you know, and it's definitely something to to take yeah. up with GCOM. Yeah, I, I, I wish we had a little bit more. Well, time to, what to what you, what will take up with, with with GCOM? It's like you try and devil in hell. What you what you taking up? Mm. Huh? Yeah. You just try and devil in hell. Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Because three one from the PPP uh, commissioner and three from the PNC or mm. uh, uh, EFC are uh, new. So where who you who will try who here? Yeah. You can feel like the huh? odds are stacked against yeah. you and really And this is what's going on. Yeah. So really who will take it to charge? Right. Yeah? Mm. Only God got to help us here. Yeah. You know? Which they doesn't believe in. Yeah, yeah. You know? but yeah no, I, I wish we could continue on, but unfortunately, it seems like we're uh, closing, we're kind of yeah. wrapping up on time right now. So if there's any last thoughts that you'd like to leave Well, us all, all I, I would like to say to the audience who are looking at us, I'm appealing to you. If you really want a real change in Guyana, please vote for the URP, the cowhead. There is two places you have to vote. On election day, you have to vote for the general, uh, the general um, candidates, mm. and you have to vote for the regional candidates. Mm. And that's two places you have to vote, where the URP, the cowhead, please vote there if you really want a change in Guyana. And don't look at race. Look at policies. URP has the policy to take you forward in this country. And I thank you. God bless you. Okay. Well, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, unfortunately, that, that brings us to right at the end of the time. So I hope that this is not, I know this won't be the last time that we'll see you on. So definitely we'll hear from you more Ms., uh, next time, Ms. Lewis. But uh, that is all the time that we have for this episode of URP Practical Talk. And as always, we encourage you to check out the website, the www.urpguyana.com. And also, of course, check us out on Facebook. And until next time, have a good one.